This week on Two Bears, One Cave. It's awesome because I can dump loads in there without any worry. And anyone I'm saying, not just her. <laughs> Woo, baby. Hurt people, hurt people. Put that on a shirt. What if I just win everything? <laughs> I fucking love it! I'm partying my dick off tonight! 100%. This episode of Two Bears, One Cave is brought to you by NASCAR. Don't miss out and invite over some friends and family to watch the Yellowwood 500 on Sunday, October 1st at 2 p.m. Eastern on NBC. We are supported by Freeze Pipe. For the smoothest cannabis smoking experience, you got to try a freeze pipe. Freeze pipe makes a unique line of freezable pipes, bubblers, and bongs that cool smoke by hundreds of degrees for icy smooth tokes without the throat burn, chest pain, or coughing attacks. They even have freezable devices built specifically for cooling joints, blunts, and vapes. The secret is the detachable glycerin chambers that come on every piece. Pop one of these chambers in the freezer for one hour, and as smoke passes through it, it's instantly chilled by over 300 degrees. Proven to outperform traditional pipes and bongs, simply inhale and relax as freeze pipes, icy glycerin chambers do all the heavy lifting. This thing makes the smoking experience so much smoother, so much cooler, literally, so much more enjoyable. Shop the smoothest pipes, bubblers, bongs, and dab rigs at everyday great prices by visiting thefreezepipe.com and use the code BEARS for 10% off your entire order. That's thefreezepipe.com. The code is BEARS for 10% off. Shop today and start fighting fire with ice. Hey, welcome to <laughs> the program, Two Bears, One Cave. I'm Tom. He's Bert. You went to Metallica last night. Fucking four men... Played for 70,000 people as if it was in their backyard. Really? Four men. Four fucking men. I, they reposted that. I was high as fuck. You reposted. They reposted. They reposted me three times. Metallica reposted me three times. Dude, I picked up Isla for school. This is a badass video. Yeah. Have you seen it? Have you, did you see my stories yesterday? I picked Isla to go take Isla to school. I go get her coffee in the morning. I'm a pretty present dad these days. Uh -huh. It's amazing. Georgia got fucked. I wonder why we had so many problems when she was in high school. <laughs> oh, my God. So, 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 but I'm a pretty present dad, so I go in the mornings and get Isla coffee. What's her coffee drink? Is it crazy? Uh, dirty matcha. Dirty matcha? It's a matcha with a shot of espresso in it. Okay. And so uh, so I get Isla coffee. I get Leanne her coffee. We had Stacy for something that's burning was spending the night. I got her coffee. I then... Uh, I think we're getting ready for Metallica. It's so cool to have a plan. That's why yeah. I, I mean, I'm being dead serious when I say, if you, if you're a fan of ours, I, I'm jealous, like because because I, I don't get that much shit in life. Yeah, but it's so fun to know we're coming in town, or Metallica is coming in town, or Goose is coming in town, or some band's coming in town, and that your thing is that night that you got all day to think about it. Yeah, yeah. What you're gonna do? Like I actually, I, I fucking planned it. I was like, okay. I want to bring weed in, right? I want to bring a vape pen in. So I brought my joke book. I put my weed inside my, my vape pen inside my joke book yeah. as if I'm going to take notes. And then I brought my, I brought joints, but I put the joints, Tom, inside my hat, like inside the band. Yeah. And so like I was all planned out. It was fucking awesome. No booze. Were your seats? Pretty good seats. And by the way, I'll tell you. Is it SoFi? It's SoFi. And I didn't pull the thing. I didn't, I didn't pull, I didn't hit up Live Nation. I just was like, because Isla, Secret Time was like. I think she was a little freaked out that she would not look very normal to her friends. Because when you go to those events, as you know, like sometimes they roll out the red carpet, like, yeah. and they'll be like, "Yo," and and I mean this sincerely. It's sometimes needed. Like last night, thank you everyone at Metallica that said hi. It was really pleasant. Yeah. But like I had to separate from Isla because it was it was distracting from her and her friends' time. Okay. So I had to separate and just do pictures, and I did pictures for fucking. I had to call it and be like, "Yo, the show's starting. Like, I, I gotta go." And so, um, it was, it was I, like, I got recognized an insane amount just walking to the car, and sure. so, and I didn't want her friends to see any of that. That's why I'm not going Sunday. <laughs> so, but, but you went, wait, but she went, but were friends there she last just, night? Yeah, her friends were there last night. Her friends, she got another friend group going Sunday. Oh, I got you. And so she just wanted regular seats. She wanted to pick them out. She didn't want to do any of the backstage, any of the like. Like yeah. I hit up Five Finger Death Punch, she's like, I don't want to go backstage. I don't want to do any of that. I just want my friends to be. I want to be normal with my friends. 
It's like, what the fuck's broken about this kid? Yeah. So the, in the morning, I'm fucking pumped, dude. It's so fun to have something to look forward to. Yeah. It really fucking is. I really swear, me and you need a big tent pole event. We do. Just for me and you to get up mm -hmm. and like, and I hope that it's like far enough in the future that I can party my fucking dick off. Like Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Yeah. Me and you would be badass. That'd be cool. I did it last year. I know, I know. Let's do it. Oh, let's talk about it. I'm not going to. I know. I, we did this last year also. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, I, you always have the big ideas, man. I know. I can't help it. Anyway, I start playing uh, mm -hmm. Enter Sandman in our driveway. And I pull up. And she walks out. And I film her walking out, head banging. Now, here's the thing about Metallica. We went to go see Goose, my favorite band, my fucking favorite band. I'm going to have them on the Burkcast soon. You are? We're both doing Red Rocks. I'm going to come out for their Red Rock show and see if I can interview them before the show. You know who hit me up? Who? That kid that um that just like put out that song. Anthony Oliver? Yes. Oliver Anthony? Yeah. Keep going. He hit me up. Yeah. And because uh, I, I mean, I saw the- You want to call him? The video. Uh, yeah, he, I mean, Sure. No, I, I don't know. We don't have to call him right now. Um, no, let's, let's not, let's Can I not. tell you why? Why? He hit me up too. Do yeah. you know how he hit me up? No. How did he hit you up? Instagram. He said to me, I was like, I saw the message and I was like, huh, what is this? And first of all, I'll say that I, I saw that same video and I was just blown away. He's amazing. Uh, by the song. and He's amazing. And he turned down $8 million, what? private jets and a stadium tour. Like recently? He turned it down. He just made a public statement on his Facebook. He still uses Facebook. That's how appellation this kid is. Why he turned it down? He is said he, this isn't why he wrote music. Pull up his statement, Halston. It's actually pretty beautiful. I wish I had this kid's integrity. I do not. I do not. For anyone asking, I will grow out a red beard and put on my older brother's clothes and play music barefoot in the mud for 50 bucks. <laughs> and you can molest me. <laughs> So he hit me up. I, I won't even say what he said. Oh, well, why? Because because mine's fucking hilarious. Mine's pretty funny too. But I just didn't want to. I don't, don't want to blow up a spot either. Yeah. Then. Wait, wait. Hang on. Can I? Can I? Can I show you mine? Yeah. And then you tell me if yeah. yours is similar. Yeah. Hang on. Let's add his add him as a contact. Create new contact. Incredible. Okay. Yeah. Uh. Wow. <laughs> I got this one. <laughs> it's pretty funny, man. The kid's fucking funny. Yeah. His, and, to me, I didn't know how to reply. And then he just wrote back, it's Oliver. And yeah. I was with Young Gravy. And so we sent a picture. And he's like, oh, man. He's, uh, yeah, he, so this is what he said. So first, you're right, is that he t was offered $8 million for... A contract? Probably for that song. And what to go ahead. I don't, I don't want six tour buses. By the way, for the record, I travel with seven over fully loaded. Yeah. It's a fucking really good call. That's a pain in the ass. Do you know, um, my friend is on the Metallica tour. How many? Guess how many trucks? Uh Oh, uh, hi, oh hold on. Yeah. I, I can do this math. Okay. So we had five. I'm going to say 15. How many? 62. Oh. <laughs> The stage is in the round with a pit in the center, yeah. and the drum kit pops up in different places. 62. Holy fuck. Yeah. Crazy. I mean, they did 70,000 tickets last night. And they're doing it again. What, Sunday? Sunday. That's 140. And then, but they're only doing like eight cities. Yeah, they're doubling up. Do you know how brilliant that is from a business, by the way, what they did for people that don't know? So it's called like the no repeats. So a lot of times... When a, a band of that magnitude plays a city, they're like, "We're doing Friday, Saturday at SoFi." Mm -hmm. You're a fan. You go, "All right, I'll go. To, I'll go to Friday." You know, see the show. Well, on this tour, they're saying that, and when they go to the a city and they play more than one, this the two shows won't be the same. So if you go to Friday show, then and you see Sunday, they're like, "Yeah, but Sunday will be totally different." So what ends up happening? Uh, I bought a two day pass. But that's I bought. Two two day. Passes. I mean, how brilliant is that though? It's fucking. It's. Uh, can I tell you what I wanted to do? And I, I didn't know if this would work, mm. but I wanted to do. I wanted to sell two shows. I wanted to do 
two shows, but do it in theaters, and they'll have the first show be all old material. All the hits. All the hits, and then the second show, all new material. It's not a bad concept. I, I, initially, I was thinking, so initially, I was I pitched it. I, you know I always pitch you. But I pitched it as me and you doing a festival. Because mm-hmm. after Fully Loaded, I got offers from some of these bigger venues, outdoor venues going, yo, how do I get you here for two days? Because for them, it makes more sense to lock us down for two days. Yeah. And so we're trying to figure that out now. And uh, and I said, what if I did a what if I did like a festival with like say me, you, Sebastian, Eliza, wh- yeah. whatever? Like I'm just saying, like p- some people have a f- couple Netflix specials. Yeah. And the first day is all old material. Yeah. Like all the bangers. And the second day is all new material. Same comic, same new material. I couldn't get anyone to bite. Like everyone was like, it doesn't make sense. I don't. Why would anyone want to see old stuff? I was like, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, the thing is, if uh, if you made that announcement, it's interesting. That, I'd be interested to see what a fan base responds with because there's definitely people that are comedy fans that go i would like to do that like i'd like to see that but you have to have them 100 percent on board with that you know what are you okay, doing i'll find out what are you doing hey guys we're curious it's me and tom what's up guys if we did a two-day festival meaning two days at say like somewhere like red rocks first night we did each did about 45 minutes of the hits of the hits all the old stuff and the second night did all new stuff would you buy a two-day pass for me and Tom? Uh, that's our question. Answer in there, and then we'll have the answer by the end. Bro, thank look, you. We're doing two bears. Look at that. Look, look at that. So uh, that Holy. makes me really angry now that I know that. What? That they're not playing any of the same songs on the Sunday. Right. You're seeing a whole different show. I'm not. Right. I got uninvited. Right. But everybody else who got. The- Isla's getting. I wonder if she doesn't even know that. She's going to have a whole other show. That's fucking. Uh, would you look at that? Um, here's the, so, so when we went and saw, I don't know how we, I don't know. I don't know if this is the same. Oh wait, we didn't go back to the statement. We were doing. Oh, Oliver. I'm sorry. Oliver. I don't want six tour buses, five tractor, 15 tractor trailers and a jet. I don't want to play stadium shows. I do not want to be in the spotlight. I wrote the music I wrote because I was suffering with mental health and depression. He currently lives in a $750 camper that he bought off Craigslist and says he dropped out of high school at 17 and worked multiple plant jobs in North Carolina, including a stand at a paper mill. Paper mill smells so fucking bad. Jesus. I don't know what fucking Oliver Anthony's thinking. Have you ever been in a paper mill? It's, have you ever been in a paper mill? Mm-mm. I have. It's not your favorite, the best job you want to have. This is incredible. He's been open about trying to fix his mental health problems with alcohol. Hey, Anthony, let's me and you hang out, oh, Oliver. Uh, one month ago, Anthony claimed he knelt in prayer and promised God to get sober if it helped him follow his dream. When enough is enough, when we're going to fight for what's right again. When are we going to fight for what's right? Millions no, have when died. When is enough enough? <laughs> Not when enough is enough. 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 <laughs> when is enough enough? <laughs> you read the rest. Okay. Uh, <laughs> when are we going to fight for what is right again? Millions have died protecting the liberties we have. Freedom of speech is such a precious gift. Never in world history has the world had the freedom it currently does. Don't let them take it away from you. Just like those wandering in the desert. We, uh, oh, excuse me, in the desert. We may have lost our way from God and have let false idols distract and divide us. It's, um, yeah, it's an, he's an impressive guy. I he's, mean, he's really talented. That is, by the way, the, uh, the, the group he's in to turn down $8 million when he's in the situation he's in to be like, this is not what I'm about. I mean, you're talking about the 0.001% of artists in the world that would be like, nah. Not doing it. He should. Yeah, whatever. I'm not going to tell him what to do. He's no, no, no. Right I don't he's think doing he's doing the right thing. Yeah, he's doing I'm just it. not. I don't have that. I never had that. Like the reason I did art was to share it with people. The reason I did stand up was to share it with people. He's sharing it. Yeah, he's I guess sharing he's it. sharing it. He's yeah. sharing. He's doing it. He's got a bigger reach than I do. He's the. Big, he's probably one of the hottest things. He's probably. One, he's probably. Did you see those those videos of people watching that video? No. Man, you know when they show. It's like essentially like a reaction. Somebody like, yeah. so there's a, a montage of people watching him do that song that I retweeted and I was in tears I watch, I watching watch it. That. I yeah. stopped crying now that I, I haven't been drinking. Stopped crying? Yeah, I haven't been crying lately. Hmm. 
Isn't that crazy? There's a whole bunch of things going on with you. Yeah. This episode of Two Bears, One Cave is brought to you by NASCAR. The NASCAR Cup Series playoffs are in full swing, and this weekend they are headed to its biggest and baddest track, Talladega Super Speedway, measuring in at over two and a half miles. This beast of a track is about nothing but pure speed. Drivers will be battling it out at almost 200 miles per hour, just inches away from each other for five miles. 100 miles there are only 12 drivers left for the chance to crown themselves a nascar champion forever so the competition is going to be at a maximum intensity fans tuning in will be treated to iconic four wide racing along the high banks of talladega with some of motorsports finest behind the wheel there are only 12 drivers left for the chance to crown themselves a nascar champion forever so the competition is going to be at maximum intensity fans tuning in will be treated to iconic four wide racing along the high banks of talladega with some of motorsports finest behind the wheel. The clock is ticking for so many still in the championship contention. And with only two races left before the round of eight, it's win and you're in. So don't miss out and invite over some friends and family to watch the Yellowwood 500 on Sunday, October 1st at 2 p.m. Eastern on NBC. Fresh ball fall is upon us and you need to be in the festive spirit. Light a candle, get some pumpkin spice and make sure your balls look nice with the sponsors of today's show, Manscaped. Get your pants puppies prepared for cuffing season with a trim as refreshing as a ball breeze by going to manscaped.com and using code BEARS for 20% off plus free shipping. Look, I've got a nice bag on me, but you wouldn't know it if I didn't trim it up. And that's why I use my Manscaped to shorn the forest below. And then I have a nice, smooth, tender bag. You can see it, touch it, maybe if I give you consent. By now, you've heard of them, but it's time to join the 9 million men worldwide using Manscaped and get that kit that covers it all, the Performance Package 4.0. Inside this package, you'll find their Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, Weed Whacker, Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver Toner, Performance Boxer Briefs, and a travel bag to hold your goodies. Bring in the fall right and get 20% off and free shipping with the code BEARS at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code BEARS. As the leaves fall, make sure you have it all with Manscaped. I would have a hard time turning down $8 million. Yeah, a lot of people would. It's a really significant amount of money. Um, like if you let's see if you scroll down, wait, is that what the fuck? Is this I really old? On, I haven't been on Twitter in a long time. That's wait, what's this? Wait a minute, that's from twenty to twenty twenty. Why is that? Have you do you not use your Twitter anymore? No, I do. That's oh, oh, that's the way it does it now. Twitter, this, he's not on your Twitter. He's on just Twitter. And, oh. it, and it pulls up old pins or your highest things. I haven't been on Twitter, but I did go, I did log into Twitter for, for something Joe saw sent. And I, what came up was like old stuff. And I was like, I'm out. I don't even understand it. I'm done. Um, here's the thing about that kid is, hey, Halston, we don't need to scroll through his Twitter. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah. Um, uh, it's impressive. And I bet he has a fear that with fancy clothes, fancy shoes, fancy cars, he loses the struggle and what he needs to talk about. Yeah. I mean, he's like the Dave Attell of music. Yeah. Because Attell got offered Attell got offered everything we've got offered and more. And he just was like, nope, clubs. Clubs is what I do. And and I, I gotta be honest with you, as a fan, I'm grateful. Yeah. Like there is a delude and a a a a, a, a delude. Mm -hmm. Like it, it, it there's a, a thinning of your talent when you do bigger, bigger, bigger venues. Mm -hmm. Like as you do an arena tour, you have to, you're forced to go back to clubs to find out what works. Yeah. If you just stay in arenas, you're fucked. You are fucked because all your jokes are like, and then I kicked her in her pussy. Ah, yeah. yeah. You know, like. No, you have to, you have to do. And I think it's actually good. I went good. right to a Dave Chappelle joke. That's yeah. my favorite joke he has. That's a great joke. That's actually. my favorite joke he has. Yeah, That's good. my favorite. Kick her in the pussy is my favorite fucking joke. It's so funny. Um, um but you got it. You also, if you're doing an arena tour, you should schedule clubs in the middle of that tour. Yeah, it keeps you honest. It really does. Mm, okay. 
I, I mean, do clubs. I do. Oh, you mean like I'm? I'm not. You're talking like you're not talking Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. No, no, no. Okay. I just, I, like, I, just I, I just mean like if you're doing this tour and you just do massive venues, a good thing to do is schedule ones that are not that size. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, so it's shout blow. out to Oliver Anthony. Yeah, and cool um, blowtorch. Yeah, that's all I have. Um, so anyway, mm -hmm. so. This is the backstory about Metallica. Okay. So. So I can't get this fucking lit. I rolled it too tight. I've been rolling joints a lot lately. You have been? I love it. I love it so much. It's the ritual. Yeah, the ritual's nice. Um. So. Okay. Uh, so we're at Goose in Chicago. Georgia and Daisy, her friend, are having a fucking blast. Leanne's having a blast. I'm having a blast. Are they Isla's, all fans too? They, you know they're brand new fans. They're like, okay. this is awesome. Yeah. Isla's not into it. She's like, yo, can you get me? I feel like this is smoke all over the place. No, it's smoking for you now. She goes, can you get me? Can you take me to a concert I want to go to? And I go, sure, what's that? She's like, <laughs> Metallica, Tool, Corn." I was like, okay. So, <laughs> did you know she was a fan of these before? I did not. <laughs> so I take her. <laughs> I get tickets to Metallica, dude, to watch your kid fucking jam out. And she was fucking like this the whole fucking time. I felt like the ultimate dad. And then, <clears throat> in the middle of the show, I walked out. I bought each of the girls uh, like little gift bags, like a little, got them a little tote, got them three shirts and a hoodie. Fucking expensive. I didn't realize how expensive that shit is. But it's it's crazy because. You know, sometimes, and I mean this, I mean this with love, but sometimes you'll get the fan that comments on how much your ticket costs, and it'll be shitty. I remember the first time it ever happened to you, mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. Meaning, we were in Philly, and this dude's like, "Dude, fuck Tom, dude, he's charging thirty dollars a ticket. Fuck that guy. Who the fuck does he think he is?" I remember being scared. Mm -hmm. I remember being like, "Ooh, don't charge more than 20. And then I talked to you, and you were like. Fuck that guy. What did he look like? I go, he looked like he looked like he looked like pretty homeless. And you're like, Yeah, I don't want him at my show. You're like, if you don't like me for an extra ten dollars, you're like ten dollars, ten fucking dollars. Yeah. And I was like, you know, man, when you love something, I don't mind going out of pocket a little bit for the experience. Sure. I don't mind going in and seeing a little extra like we got not the best tickets, but we paid way more than anyone's paying for my show. Way more. Yeah, how much are Metallica tickets? Well, I, I mean, paid, it's well known, so you can yeah, say Yeah, uh, we paid, I got eight tickets for like $5,500. <laughs> wow. yeah. yeah. Yeah, and they, and they weren't even great. See, I looked at everyone around us, and I was like, how did you guys afford this? Really? Because like, I was like, I was like, I know this is this took a bite. For me, I was like, fuck. By the way, I, I initially gotten, I'd gotten two, uh, seven tickets, and we thought we got a steal, and fucking dumb, dumb Isla was like, she looked at him after we bought him. She goes, I might have made a mistake. You want to be closer, right? I'm like, motherfucker. She had us in the nosebleeds in the top. I was like, Isla, we just dropped two grand on nosebleed tickets. She's like, we'll give them to somebody. I was like, it's not your fucking money. Yeah. So, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll yes. give them to somebody. Yeah, thanks. We're going to scalp them outside the thing. What'd you do with them? Gave them to the people on the team. Oh, you did? Uh, yeah, I came, I hit up everyone at Birdie Boy, and I was like, yo, if anyone wants to go see Metallica. By the way, it's a great show anywhere you fucking sit. Sure. Anywhere you sit, it's, it's just being there for the event. It really made me feel like eventizing everything, making things a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. Like, because they made it big. Fire. Fucking lights. I had a panic attack in the middle, and I was like, and I calmed myself down. Yeah. I was like, I, I say, because it's so big and so yeah. far. So fucking big. Yeah, I, 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 uh. I started making a bucket list of bands I want to see. Like, That's cool. I haven't I haven't seen. I mean, I was in New Zealand, and they just go, "Do you want to go see Ed Sheeran?" And I go, "Oh, fuck yeah. yes, fuck yes." Because I just know I wasn't even like I'm not well versed in Ed Sheeran, but enough where yeah, I'm like, all you need to know is it's kind of hip hoppy from one of us. Well, I just know that like the guy is <laughs> one of the, one, one such, of the most fun burnable people yeah, in the world. But he's like also just like this musical savant. Like he's yeah. So watching him do it, you know, like I was like always heard about 
him playing just with like a looping machine and, and watching him put it together. And you're like, holy shit. And that was a stadium too. That was insane stage that they built. I mean, so I found out, I'm like, wait a minute though, we're in New Zealand. They're like, yeah, they had to get like a duplicate of his stage built and shipped over. That's like, when it's put on a ship. And like, that's how that got there. I was like, cause it's, so elaborate it's like the metallica build out oh he was him and taylor swift are the two biggest things in touring yeah massive like like, what we do in touring is nothing compared to them taylor Mm -hmm. swift made a billion dollars in la in la in la see if i know how much money uh taylor swift made in in, on her la run i think she did seven shows and i think she grossed a billion dollars stop I I could be. How much did Taylor Swift gross in L.A.? Huh? Those pictures aren't going to help. Let's see. Oh, maybe not a billion. Uh, Hang on. That's increased. That's so crazy that her six concerts resulted in a $320 million increase to L.A. County's GDP and added 3,300 jobs and 160 160 million in earnings for businesses and cities. Okay, so how many? Good so God, I, I, we still didn't get my uh, my uh, answer. Yeah, I know, but let's. Just I don't want to know how much they brought to LA. I'm sorry. Yeah. Just scroll up, find out how much many. many fucking Jesus, I'm I'm high and I'm never gonna get fucking <laughs> communicate. I'm never gonna communicate what I'm trying to communicate. How about how about how much did Taylor Swift earn for her LA concerts? Maybe that'll come up. Is it actually? Yeah, yeah, I see that. I see that. Find out how much Taylor shift. Shift. Find out how much Taylor shift. Five billion in cities total. This is insane. Well, you saw. I mean, how? There's no such like you know people break websites. You'd have to cheat on your wife for her, right? High traffic. Yeah, of course you do. Like if but, Taylor Swift's but, like, yo, you want to come backstage, and then she's like, yo, lose your kids. Yeah, you're like, yeah, they're they're fine. I'd be like, and I, and then she's like, and the fucking your mom tell her to go wait in the car. I'm like, that's my wife. She's like, <laughs> she's like, well, fucking lose the drip. Yeah. And then she's like, you want a party? And I was like, what? She's like, that's not, you know. Yeah. Come on. I'm a five, I made a billion dollars in this city. You don't think yeah. I fucking get down? Line your dick up with coke. Let's fucking blow it off your cock. <laughs> yeah. What do you? Man. Hang on, hang on. What do you yeah. do for real? I'm being for real right what now. Do you, what are you talking about? You pull your dick out. <laughs> What are you talking about? It's Taylor Swift. And also, your mom would understand, just so you know. Afterwards, she'd understand. I go, who wants to sign t-shirts from Taylor Swift? She asked if I could just go into the bathroom real quick and she'll sign them. Dad. Of course you do. Fucking I, Wait, how old is she? Is it creepy that I'm 50 talking about Taylor Swift snoring yeah, coke off my cock? Of course it is. Hey, that's fucking, I, get, I got chicks pregnant at that age. What if Taylor Swift's like, can you give me some of your seed? Uh, the, is your seed still good? No. For real? I'm snipped. Ooh. Well, it takes you out of this fucking fantastic scenario. No, it doesn't. It's awesome because I can dump loads in her without any worry. Mm-mm. And anyone I'm saying, not just her. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I wasn't just talking about you, Taylor. I would. Uh, you think she's a fun time? I think she's a fucking blast. I think so too. I think she's a fucking blast. I bet she's. I bet. I bet there would be a. Imagine night. the album she would write after dating you. <laughs> <laughs> he can't find his sunglasses in the morning. <laughs> oh, I was up all night due to sleep apnea. Oh my god. Oh my god, that's so much money! Nine to thirteen million per concert. So her ticket prices have to be just—they're astronomical. Yeah. We, I, I she actually, broke. She. That's what I was saying. She broke Ticketmaster. Like, think about how much traffic Ticketmaster's used to handling. And when she announced her tour, they're like, "Hey, man, the site is crashed." Ticketmaster. Yeah. It's fucking crazy. I think it would be cool, like. This is my scenario with me and Taylor. So we go back there, right? I'm with my kids. Yeah. I'm with my wife. Uh, she's got all her people back there. And they're like, Taylor, Taylor, we need to, we need you for a second. We need you. She's like, give me a second. I'm talking. I'm, you're my favorite comedian. And I'm like, really? 
She was like, that podcast you do with the bald guy, I fucking love it. And yeah. I was like, oh, thank you so much. She's like, so who is everyone? I go, this is my wife. She, she gives me like a weird look. And She's then, like, you're really sweet, you know that? Yeah. And then <laughs> I introduced my kids. <laughs> and she says, uh, she goes, so like, like how serious is it? And yeah, I go, what? And she comes in real quick, almost like she's going to kiss me and whispers in my ear, run away with me. And I'm like, what? And then she kicks off her high heels, grabs my hands, and we start running. And everyone's, Taylor, Bert, don't go. Yeah. But we're running, looking over. Oh, no, it's our night tonight. Burnt your last piece of toast. Avocado's gone bad. Or is the hot sauce bottle empty? Try grocery delivery from DoorDash. You'll get everything you want delivered right when you need it, right to your door. You've trusted DoorDash to deliver your restaurant favorites. And now you can get grocery delivery that actually delivers too. With thousands of grocery stores to choose from, you'll find the best in your neighborhood and boost your local economy with each and every order. You'll get exactly what you ordered or will make it right. So sit back and enjoy quality groceries just like you picked them for yourself. With easy substitutions right in the app and best in class customer support, DoorDash delivers groceries exactly how you want it. Get 50% off your first DoorDash order up to a $20 value when you use the code BEARS at checkout. Limited to offer, terms apply. That's 50% off up to $20, no minimum subtotal, and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the app store and enter the code BEARS. Don't forget, that's code BEARS for 50% off your first order with DoorDash. Yeah. And then... By the way, she's 34. There's not... I mean, like, that's still very... She actually... She's like the lady, and you're like, she's terminal. She's got like... A, she's got a week she to live. She can't hear us. Yeah. She's got a week to live. <laughs> you can't hear us. Taylor Swift's 33 years old. Oh, she's man. She's got a boyfriend, I think. She's got a series of boyfriends, right? I mean, like, over the years, right? And there's always, like, big drama around... Because she was with... Um, Who's Taylor Swift? Matty Healy. Matty Healy. Oh, the front man of the 1975. Uh, they broke they up. They broke up. All right. Fucking. Oh, here we go. Who is Taylor's ex-boyfriend's that second drop down? Oh. Uh, here we go. John Mayer. Oh, oh. what the fuck? That, John Mayer. That's not even Jake that long. Jake Gyllenhaal. Jake Gyllenhaal. Harry Styles. Connor Kennedy, the center for the Guardians. Wow. Whoa. That's the list? Jesus Christ, man. Taylor Lautner. Sam Armstrong. Joe Jonas. Yeah, Taylor Lautner. Drew Dunlop. Thomas Hiddleston. I don't know. I don't know half these names. Uh, not a lot of diversity. Do better, uh, Taylor. Yeah. A lot of Johns. A lot of Sams. Lucas. Taylor. Oh, Taylor. Dot, dot data to Taylor. Oh, yeah, that's weird. Yeah, Taylor. Who Would you feel weird dating a Bert? <laughs> Would that be strange to you? Oh, Bert, you're so hot right now. Oh, Bert. Drew Hardwick? What's that? Teardrop on my guitar. Oh, these are songs they wrote about them. Uh, uh, yeah, what song do you think she'd write about me? Dead, Fat, and Bloated? <laughs> uh, what's I, that smell? What's that smell? <laughs> I know there's a dick there somewhere. It's just about it being dark and we're playing in the covers. I see my uh, I see my youngest all the time now. He's like, I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm smelling my hands, and it <laughs> reminds me of the first time you came to pick me up when I lived in the Rampart Division, <laughs> and Christina hadn't didn't know who you were. And she goes, I think Bert's outside, and I go, he is. She goes, there's a guy in like a white truck smelling his fingers. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's him. That's him. That's him. Yeah. Nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. Taylor Swift. Dinger. She is the fucking. She is the shit. What if yeah. we could just become friends with her? It's probably a very lonely existence right now. Yeah. For her. I'm yeah. guessing. I bet it is. You're so famous. You're too famous. What if she like was into us and she's like, hey, would you guys do a live episode of Two Bears like before I go on stage? And we're like, ooh. I don't know if he, do you watch all the episodes? <laughs> Just the one about you. No, talk about blowing those. And she's <laughs> like, are you really going to do a double T and DP with Adriana Chechik before me? <laughs> We're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Easy, Taylor. What are you talking about? Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> if she had a sense of humor, yeah, she'd invite us to our show and lead us on and get us totally naked and then have everyone walk in. 
That would be pretty that cool. That would be fucking hilarious. Like me and you just totally naked. And then we go, we were kidding too. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> I know why that. we're jokingly rock art. <laughs> I know I know we're doing a prank. <laughs> That's why I'm Who do you weaker. think your wife's would be? Oh, that's a good one. Like where your where your wife would be like, oh, can I tell you what's crazy? So Le- Leanne's driving. We're driving to the show last night. Yeah. And Leanne's, Le- Leanne drives even now that I'm not drinking, Leanne still drives. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I never drive. You don't like to drive? I like to be on my phone. Yeah. Like I, like, I feel like if I'm always like, can I just see the directions? She's like, I don't know how to do this. G- uh Alexa, I go, it's Siri, Alain. We're in the car. What was I talking about? <laughs> Who your wife would oh. bone? Oh, we're in the car and she goes, she was talking about James Hetfield. It's Rip from Yellowstone. You're right. It's Rip from Yellowstone. Mm-hmm. My wife would fuck him in oh. front of me. Really? In front of me. And by the way, he's like, reached out to her like uh he didn't know he was doing it someone was with him at a party and they were like yo uh whatever your name is copper cole oh, i um, think i know him do you i think so it's crazy he used to be like a redhead you know he's like louis b mayer's grandson dude i feel like i know this guy cole hauser yeah i think i know him he's a badass dude He's old school Hollywood. Wait, do I? Maybe I don't. No. Maybe I'm confusing him with another actor. How, what, how would you know him? From a, 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 I connected with an actor, you know, that I just met before from another series, though, that I was like, oh, wait, is that him now? So Cole Hauser looks totally different than this guy right here in real life. Pull up just, you can't just do Rip, just do Cole Hauser. Yeah. No, I saw Cole that. Hauser was in uh, Richard Linkletter's movie Days and Confused. Okay. He was, he was, He's Louis B. Mayer's son, grandson, no, which is know. fucking crazy. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Look at that jawline. Yeah. He's like a legit fucking actor. And Leanne's all in. Uh, She's obsessed with it. We have a poster of Rip in our living room. Really? Like the one I have of you with your legs. We have the same thing in our living room. And so, yeah, she's obsessed with Cole Hauser. I can't believe that blasphemous lie you're telling. So she, did you see the picture I posted today? Today? Yeah. Go to my stories, Halston. Um, I just took a picture next year. Uh, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. There we go. Jesus look at my legs compared to yours. Fucking huge calves. Oh, look at that guy. You're so full of shit. Um, so we're driving down, and, J- and Leanne tells a story about James Hetfield. She was like, one time she was at a... a she was, she was a waitress, and this mm-hmm. guy was, like, fucking harassing her, and he was being a dick. Mm-hmm. And James Hetfield walked up to be, she was like, no, I mean, he was he was still Metallica. But he walked up to the guy, and he's like, hey, how about you get the fuck out of here before I take you out of here? And the guy's like, what? And he goes, no one talks to anyone like that. No one's allowed to talk to people like that. The answer is some waitress. At, I think at the Chateau Marmont, maybe. And she's like, and he and the guy's like, go, go fuck yourself. He's like, I will take it outside right now. And he's like, over her? And he's like, yeah, over her. Let's fucking go. And the guy's like, the fuck, man? And he's like, yeah, get the fuck out of here. I'll go, I'll walk you out. And the guy walks away. And James Heffield is looking at him. Sorry you had to deal with that. She was like, it's okay. And he goes, no, it's not okay. No one should be talked to like that. And he just walked away. She went by back and said, can I buy you a drink? And he went, no, I'm fine. Thanks. Just a fucking, don't you love when you hear sl- good guy stories like on of the course, DL? Of course. On the DL. Like, no one's supposed to know how good this guy is. And then it comes out. And that was when she was working. Yeah, and that's why I leave my name on the GoFundMe lists because how are they going to know it's me if they don't know my name? Yeah, yeah right, right. I'm I'm blown away by how how you don't leave your you go anonymous. I've I've done both. I said though. I mean, okay. I, I've done I've done. Why do you go anonymous when you do anonymous? I don't want the attention for it. So like for like who who someone you hated, but you're like Ugh. no. I just go like I don't want this. To, I just don't want it to be a thing. I guess I don't know. I just here you go. Here's the donation. Um, or, or there's ones that I've given that I just don't, it's not a public thing. I've donated to it and yeah. I guess you could find that's out. okay. I just figured it out for all those uh, in vitros I donated to. I should never have, uh, put my name on <laughs> because they hit me up a lot and they're like, I need more money. Okay. A lot of those in vitros. There was a period where I was like heavy in in vitros. Like people who are trying to get pregnant. Trying to get pregnant. And it was, and I, and what had happened was I, people were like, people were really shitty in the comments. They were like, maybe you're not supposed to get pregnant. Oh my god! And 
And then uh, they were like, I'm not going to fucking pay my money so you can have a baby. Fucking, if you want a baby, you figure that out. Jesus. And I was like, and I just felt bad because it was always the women. It was never the guy. Yeah. Never, the guys never won in vitro. It's the fucking women. And so I just kind of would slide in with not a ton of money, but whatever I had, whatever I felt was easy to type in. Type, easy to type in. A few grand? A thousand. I don't think I've ever given less than a thousand. Yeah. I give a thousand easy. I've got the most I've ever, uh, the most I've ever put in GoFundMe is 20 grand. 20 grand? No tip. No tip. No tip to fucking GoFundMe. Yep. No, what? Because go, you put on go, GoFundMe, you, you give them money, and they're like, hey, how much do you want to give us? Oh. 10%? And you're like, yeah, I'm going to give you $2,000. Suck my dick. How about no. 75 bucks? Yeah. This is how much you get. So no brainer. I've given the most money. I've given this to actual friends to start a GoFundMe because I want to retweet them and I want people they to have the see, money yeah, to yeah. see. But I also want them to know I gave money because that's the number one thing you get. You retweet a GoFundMe. They're like, "Where's your name on there?" And you're like, "I did anonymous fuckface." Yeah. And they're like, mm, "I didn't see you gave money. So you want me to give money? Do you think you? Yeah. Woo, baby. Fucking cut. Hurt people. Hurt people. <laughs> Put that on a shirt." I think that is. Oh, it is? I think hey, so. see if you can get the shirt, hurt people, hurt people, and then get me a XL. Oh, man. Oh, Let's shut see. up. Please say they don't have it. Oh, no, yeah. they do. Yeah, well, I guess I didn't make that. What's that? Hurt people, hurt people. Are those hands shaking? Knife? Oh, it's a knife. <laughs> um. Yeah. And healed people, heal people. Hey, let's talk about Urban Meyer and the fucking. The Gators thing. Are you watching that? Yeah, of course. I just started watching that. That team was fucking bananas. Okay, who's better, that team or the fucking Miami team with Shockey on it? Ooh, that's Pull good. up the two fucking lineups. And that's I know a, nothing about. 2001 Miami Hurricanes. Yo, we need to get Tim Tebow on here. Yeah, that'd be great. Tim Tebow. Man, I'm bummed, still bummed that he's not playing professional football he would have retired by now right yeah for sure this is the um hey wait when you think about it tom yeah baker mayfield kind of did what oliver anthony's doing baker mayfield not baker mayfield sorry baker baker i want baker i need a lot out of you this year okay i need a lot out of you this year I need a fucking lot. What I need is you to leave it all on the field and fuck anyone who talks shit about you. I want you dancing in the end zone, taunting motherfuckers. I want old school Baker that almost got canceled for calling people. Okay, bleep that out. I want old school ba Baker, fucking Baker Mayfield. He's playing. He's uh, starting for the Bucks, and I'm betting ten thousand dollars on the Bucks to win the Super Bowl. That's a pretty exciting bet. It's because I, I win a million dollars if they win. I know, but just how how much of a rush will you feel just if they get in the playoffs? You're going to be like, dude, <sighs> yeah, dude. I'm betting. So, so I I don't know. Yo, if you're a betting website, hit us up, and I'll and I'll just do it exclusively through you. I'm betting. Every, so here's my plan. You ready? Yeah. Ten thousand dollars on the bucks, and then a thousand dollars against the bucks every game. That's your bet. Yeah. That way. If I lose, if I lose, then I still get my money back. Okay. But if I win, yeah, then I have a chance of just a free million dollars. Oh man, I should take it. I should bet too. I should. Is that bet. not a bad bet? I don't know anything. I'm not a good sports better, but I feel like I should take a. I should bet on. Do you know Big Cat? Yeah, he's a big time. What's better. his? What do you have him in? Do you have him in your phone? Um, he's a fucking. I got him. I'm calling him. Okay. You think he'll answer on a fucking... No, he's watching some sporting game right now, isn't he? It's a Saturday. He's sitting next to Portnoy. They all cast out for big checks. What's up, Bert? Hey, buddy. I'm sitting with Tommy. We're doing two bears. Uh, and we want to talk gambling with you for a second. Okay. What's up, big cat? See my new setup. What's up, Tom? My new setup I'm watching. You can hear in the background. I have five TVs in my basement. All four of them are on sports, and then the middle one's on Peppa Pig. <laughs> That's a good dad right there. That's a solid dad. I got I got horse racing, football, golf, Little League World Series, and Peppa Pig. Holy shit. Fuck. So wait, here's so here's uh, here's what I'm wondering. Uh, you bet who did you bet to win the Super Bowl? The Eagles last year? All right. So I bet the Eagles at twenty two to one last year. 
Uh, this year I have the Ravens, but I also Jersey Jerry, who I work with. Hold on one sec. Jersey Jerry, who I work with, uh, he he has a ghost in his house, and we went ghost hunting last week, and the ghost told me to bet the Jets at fifteen to one. So I put ten k on the Jets at fifteen to one because that's what the ghost told me to do. Wait, wait, wait! Fifteen to one to win the Super Bowl? Yeah. And it was a ghost pit. You can't, you can't. I literally was talking to a ghost. I can't say no to a ghost. That's, that's Fuck, fair. I that's, wish you hadn't told yeah. me about your ghost bet. Yeah. What about, okay, yeah. I heard it's I heard it's 75 to 1 for the Bucks to win. Uh, yeah, that would be just lighting your money on fire. You want me to just book that action? I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, what about this? What about this? What if I bet $10,000 on the Bucks to win the Super Bowl and then every week bet $1,000 against the Bucks? Well, they're going to be underdogs, so you probably will just end up end up losing even more money. Fuck, fuck. I thought I had it figured out. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Do you know how many times I thought I broke Vegas? <laughs> like, oh, this is a new system. It's going to work. This is going to work. I'm just going to fade the public. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And then I look up, and I'm like, wait, how'd this happen? I lost everything again. <laughs> hey, is, 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 it, is it a fun bet to bet who's going to win the Super Bowl? Yeah, it's fun if you, I mean, it's like a season long, like, especially you guys with your schedule and like your touring and stuff. If you can't watch every game, you, you know, you have something invested in the in, entire season. So, um, yeah, do it. Why not? Ravens. I have Ravens 18 to one. I like that. Okay. All right. I'm going through. I'm going to, I'm going to pick two and teams ghost. and the ghost. Don't forget the ghost. Well, I mean, I'm, if best, the ghost, if, I'm if, best if friends the with Aaron Rodgers. If the win the Super Bowl and I win the first ever ghost pick. I mean, they'll, that will go down as the greatest pick of all time. Hey, Bar, well. Barstool's got a sports back right, book, right? Uh, no, I don't know if you read the news recently, Bert. I know you've been uh, <laughs> off for a month, but uh, we do not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he bought the company back for a dollar. I know you've been on vacation. Oh, that's right. He came in and lit up because no one was in the office at 9 a.m. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we, no, we no longer have one. That's good, though, right? I mean, it, it, the whole the whole situation is a win-win all around. So good. we couldn't – I mean, there – I don't want to get into it, but there was, you know, the regulators were so insane with us. They they did an entire hearing in Massachusetts about my can't lose parlay uh, <laughs> because they were saying I was like, you know, misleading people because I was calling it can't lose. It was basically the Michael Scott deposition where they were like, our lawyers were quoting like, you know, crunch berries aren't actually berries. <laughs> and wings aren't actually buffalo. And so like it was the, it was the, one of the funniest things ever. We had I had like. People, our lawyer had to be like, listen, Dan Katz is the worst gambler of all time. Everyone knows this. And it's like documented, like, like in court record that, that I'm the worst gambler of all time. Oh, that's perfect. So yeah. we should definitely yeah. not take your advice on anything right now, right? No, don't take any of my advice. Listen, I, I lose. I'm a loser. I'm a lifelong loser, but I love doing it. So I'm never going to stop. The sparkle, man. It's hard to turn down the sparkle of when you've got when you're about to cover and they're gonna kick a field goal. And if they kick the field goal, you win fucking ten thousand dollars. There's no better feeling than right as they hike the ball. It is the fuck. It's why I live life. It's the best. It's my favorite. Uh, my favorite thing in the world is on Saturday mornings in college football or college basketball, looking and being like, all right, there's like sixty games. And I'm going to bet every single game. And it's like 10 in the morning. I'm like, what if I just win everything? <laughs> I fucking love it. <laughs> it. It must be my equivalent is when you go to the doctor and you get your liver enzymes back and they're good. And you're like, shut up. I'm partying my dick off tonight. I did it again. I, I did, did it again. again. <laughs> All right, dude. Hey, what, what sports book do you use? Do you know, can you say? Uh, I, I can't. I, I still am using the Barstool sports book still exists. So okay. I'm still using but it will uh, become ESPN Fest in a couple months. Okay. All right. Well, thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. Right. I'll talk right. to you later. Hope to see you guys soon. All right. See ya. See you, bro. Uh, he's fucking awesome. Yeah, he's great. Him and PFT are fucking awesome. That's a great show. Yeah. Um. So then let's think this out. Let's have something to look forward to. I feel, I feel like going to gamble now. I want to gamble. Yeah. I want to gamble. I want to gamble. I want to gamble. Look, if I'm not going to – if I'm if I'm I'm trying to re – figure out how this weekends are going to work and i can easily not drink on sundays if i'm gambling all day but you gotta like here's the thing if you want you want to feel it Look. you gotta you gotta kind of up the action you know you can't be like hey 100 bucks it's gotta hurt yeah it's gotta hurt 
Yeah. Okay. It's got to hurt if it's going to be a thrill, you know? Let's talk about it. All right, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Yeah. I'll, I'll say this publicly. I don't know when we're getting, I don't know when this is airing and I, and we can clip this out and send this to someone. Uh, what are this? The, I don't know. I'm not going to say all the name. I'm not going to, I don't want to miss a name of a site so that would exclude them. Yeah, don't do that. But if you're a gambling site, I will tell you this right now. I will publicly say what you pay me per episode and I will bet everything you pay me per episode every fucking week. So there's a chance that you'll get all that money back every fucking week. I'll take that action too. If there's a website out there that wants to sponsor us, we will bet our entire the whole paycheck thing. per read. But basically, we possibly will be doing free reads for you all season. We'll every, whatever we get, we'll bet all of it. And and then we'll gamble all fucking fun. Yeah, we'll, we'll just say what our bets are. We'll say what our bets are. And, yeah. and we'll be very open. Yeah. And you, by the way, and if you want us to be discreet, then we'll be discreet. And But we'll, we'll but we know that our deal is... Per read, we will bet every penny that weekend on fucking football, college football and pro football, and we'll have a, and we'll always do a Monday night game. So when you see, so when the episode drops on Monday morning and you know what team we bet, you know that you you know that night when you're watching Monday night football, you're rooting for one of us or against one of us. How's that sound? I like That's it. great. So our episodes come out Monday morning. So we're like, yo, I got the Eagles tonight, or I got the Bucks. Over the Eagles, yeah, yeah, and I'm taking you over in a parlay. And that Monday night, you go, you're watching the game, going, Bert's got fucking money on this. Tom <laughs> yeah. took the opposite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll be fucking fun. Yeah, I'll do that. Let's, let's do it. Let's do it. We'll bet on every Call Monday fucking night. every Monday night game has to be a big bet because it's, it's a Monday. By the way, show. we could ju- we could just bet Monday night games big as fuck. Yeah. Let's figure this out. Let's if do you're, it. If you're a gambling site. Let's do it. Okay, so um, so let's go back to, I want to talk, because you know college football. I don't, I don't want to make the whole thing about football. We did talk about blowing loads and Taylor Swift. Okay. Who was better, who was better, the that Miami team or that Florida team? Well, it d- depends on if we're talking about the 06 or 09 team for Florida, and then is it this 2000 or 2001? I, I think it's 2000. 2001, or is it 2000 Miami What's the 2000 Miami roster look like? Like, leave that one up, but just add the 2000. Um, Shocky was on the team. Yeah. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Let's see. Because these. Um, oh Clinton Portis God. was on the team. Oh, my God, dude. God, look at this. Shocky. Dude. Reggie Wait, Wayne. is. Because the, did the 2000 team. Win the title or the 2000? Which, which one does this say? No. Represented. Uh, da, da, da. Sup- Sugar Bowl champion. National champion. National champion. So it is the 2000 team, right? Yeah. National champion. Who was your quarterback? Ken Dorsey, I think. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Am I right? Yeah, look at that lineup. Okay. Santana Moss. You got Santana Moss, Clinton Portis, and Najee Davenport in the, in the backfield. Oh my God! Yeah, yeah. Shockey's tight end. Todd Sievers was a kicker. What's that? <laughs> Todd Sievers. <laughs> oh fucking! Look at Ed Reed. Ed Reed's unbelievable. Yeah. Keep doing that. Keep doing that. I want to see what they look like now. Nope. 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 Yeah, Dan Morgan was a fucking animal, oh, dude. Jesus. Man, Dan Morgan looked so like now he pull was. Up, pull, uh, up, pull, like, up the, pull up the, what is it, 2004? No. 2007? 06, 06 or 09 for the Gators, yeah. Yeah. That team. That team was fucking thick. Yeah, that was, that was a loaded team, man. I mean, you know, the truth is each fan base will just tell you why theirs well yeah, yeah it's it's the, everything it's, everyone says the same thing yeah. it's like you watch i'm watching the documentary and they're like football's different in florida and you know, i'm like yeah kind of but they say that in texas of course of course and they say that in california they, and definitely they say, say that in, in Ohio, nebraska and they say it in, in pennsylvania um no this team's outrageous too man i mean this team had i think the 09 team is more loaded for uh for the gators i think yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when Tim Tebow was a uh, Yeah, the junior. 09 team had, they won the title again, and that's when they had, like, 
uh, Aaron Hernandez. Aaron Hernandez. Do you know he and, killed himself with, with soap on the floor? What? Like he put soap. I'm um, by. He put soap on the floor. All right, because this, yeah, because this had the, the Pouncy twins, are, Chris yeah. Rainey, um, yeah, Jeff Dems, Brandon James. Let's see, they had uh, Brandon Spikes was still there. Um, what was there? They had yeah, Major Wright, Ahmad Black. Like that team was loaded, man. Janoris Jenkins. God, they're all juniors. It's fucking crazy. Yeah, they fucked people up. That was a really really good team. That doc is awesome. I, Meyer I just is a started psycho, it. and I fucking who. Urban Meyer and uh, like he's a crazy person. <laughs> he's a crazy person, and he basically went in there like I'm training these people for special forces. Yeah, and, and like yeah, like when you see how all of them are, it's it's you know 15 years later or whatever, and all those guys are like that's the hardest thing I ever did in my life was working out for that team. Yeah, they're like he's he's a lunatic. I wonder, like, I worked out pretty hard today, but I go, it's nothing like those kids. No. Like, it's really... Have you not seen, like, the mat drills thing they were doing? No, I, I just started it at the gym today. I started there's watching a, there's it. There's a couple of teams that are, have, like, famous mat drills, and I didn't know about theirs, but there's, like, they, like they um, basically two of you uh, lay on the floor yeah. on a mat, and one of them tries to escape the mat by crawling away. The other one has to choke them out, and you, you just fight each other. They're just fighting. You know, is this the Florida? They're doing midnight lifts and shit. Yeah, they're doing. It was. These are the mat drills in Florida. Yeah, I mean, I. It's in the dock, but I don't know. I haven't seen how it is. Are they, and they have boxing gloves on. I haven't seen that. That, that wasn't in the one that I what saw. What's this? But. Yeah, get them to just. Basically, making them fight on top of all the, the lifting and and the conditioning. And that's stuff. The, the thing that's impressive to me about like that. Is like when you have a boy, yeah. There's the a boy's natural instinct is to punch, yeah, and fight, yeah. and grab, and That's, wrestle, and jump. So they do it all the time. And then it's there's certain boys that that they get they shake that out of, or yeah. that don't have that. And then you look at like the the men that go go do this, they don't mind touching people. Yeah, I know. My Alice is starting jujitsu. For real? Yeah. Do you consult Uncle Joe? I talked to him. I talked to a couple other people. I was in jujitsu. Hmm? I was in jujitsu. Really? Does she like it? She's been doing it for a few years. Yeah. Oh, really? She choked me out the other night. Does she like it? Yeah, she loves it. She loves it. She's like, uh, we were, I don't know where we were. And she was like, I could choke you out. And I was like, you can fucking choke me out. She goes, it's easier with big guys. I go, what? She goes, come here. And those little needle arms of hers yeah. went right under my chin. And Leanne and Georgia were watching. And I went like, <laughs> And they started laughing so hard, and Isla, as soon as Isla heard them laughing, she just tightens it up, and I'm like, no, I'm tapping. And she's like, I haven't learned to tap yet. And I was like, what? <laughs> he goes, Ellis is like, he goes, uh, I think I want to do jiu-jitsu. And I go, oh, yeah? He goes, do you get a six-pack if you do it? And I go, yeah. And he goes, yeah, sign me up. <laughs> he goes, I want them up from up to here all the way down. I'm like, <laughs> okay, you'll get them. Go ahead, dude. <laughs> He was just a fucking eight pack. Do you realize he's going to be unmanageable at 10? Yeah. Dude, <laughs> he's going to know how to fucking arm bar you. I know. And he's going to be Ellis. No, I'm signing up at the same time just because of that. You're doing jujitsu? Yeah, because I don't want him to kill <laughs> me. Are you doing six and under? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to do all kids. Yeah. That's, that's going to be Ellis. <laughs> Fuck, man. You really are doing jujitsu? I'm going to go to the same place that I take him to. Yeah. Really? Yeah. That's crazy. I've always wished I could do jujitsu. I just don't want to get a black eye. Why would you get a Every black eye? Every now and eye? then they bump into you and you so? get a black eye. I'm like, I don't want that. I don't what know. are you talking about? I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm not good with touching other people like that. Really? Uh, yeah, you don't like the yeah the contact, right? The, I don't Yeah, I don't like touching. I don't like, infl I don't like con con conflict. I don't like conflict. Yeah. If you could have, if there was a jujitsu class that taught you how to leave an, an, a situation early, I'd be like, that's what I'd like. Like, you should probably walk away now. That's the like, class? Oh, so that's when I walk away? Okay, cool. <laughs> and then like, yeah. There's, I think it's just a, a cool thing to try. I've never tried it. I might do it and hate it. I don't know. Yeah, I'm It's just, a cool thing to know how to do. Yeah. Uh, I think, but I, I then I get super competitive and I'm like, how, how fast to a, like a black belt? And well, it depends on. 18 months. 18 months. I think that's the fast. What's the fastest jujitsu black belt earned? It's not going to be that. 18 months. I mean, are you talking about someone doing it seven days a week? And yeah, they do it. So 
10 flat fastest. Okay. Travis Stevens. Yeah, but these are like elite people, right? No, they're just guys that went into a class. 18 months. That's so funny. I read that. Yeah, but isn't that funny how my I, the but one, these are but these are elite people. Isn't no, it? no, no. Travis Stevens was a he was a he was a security guard outside of uh, uh, Target. What? And he got fucked with with these kids. And you he's being like, serious? Yeah, he's like, I'm gonna turn this around. I'm gonna take jujitsu. And he focused hard, and he got it in 18 months. How the fuck do you know this? I, I read the article. Yeah, type in Travis Stevens. Travis Stevens. Yeah, he was a security guard at uh, Target. You're being serious? No, I, I should stop fucking around because okay. he could kill me. Okay. No, I'm joking. I think he was a. Uh, how how did he? Yeah, that's a really crazy thing. I've never heard of that. I mean, even the BJ Penn thing, who's super elite. I mean, that was yeah. three years. He got to how how oh, he did judo too. I don't know. Um, scroll down. Let's see. Does it say anything about that? Because that's so weird, man. That's eighteen months. I, I think he was probably like. A fucking insane, yeah, yeah, like natural talent, yeah. He was an Olympian, yeah. So that he, guy, he that guy's a, did a different. If you, if you go into jujitsu and you had a wrestling background, like you knew yeah. how to wrestle, you, you're definitely going to be like. That's what they say about the Paul brothers is that they were really good wrestlers. Really? Yeah. Were they on the wrestling team? Yeah, yeah, they were. Yeah, yeah. And they're they're great athletes. I mean, they're they're really athletic dudes. Well, that um, that Jake Paul as much shit as people talk about him. The guy knows how to box. Like he's a proficient boxer. He's uh, he's a fucking phenomenal marketer. Well, that's this guy's a for goddamn sure. genius. I mean, look. Yeah, but he can. I mean, I, the way I, I the, those those men's brains are fascinating brains. Yeah, to yeah. Say the fucking least. But to the boxing thing, it's like I understand the the criticism of like you haven't fought elite boxers yet, and that's true. But for somebody like you, just watch him in the ring. Like he's not like some amateur that's oh, no. like trying to like he actually he has a, a a put together boxing game yeah but everyone just wants to see him fight more elite boxers which I, is you know probably was, the thing to do now I, I stood next to ben Askren, the guy he fought <laughs> ben Askren. ben Askren. yeah I, said, I, I played disc golf with ben Askren. you did yeah oh he loves disc golf right oh and by the way like i'm a pedestrian compared to him like i i am not even remotely as knowledgeable or as good at disc golf as ben Askren. he um he is he is legit i think he's ranked he's got his own course at his house and he's good he's yeah. good and he's fucking really passionate like he knows discs funky farms is where he where he plays at i'm not gonna lie and i think ben would admit this i blew his doors on the first hole we really? Like, yeah, we did an opening shot. You, type in Bert uh, Bert Kreischer disc golf DGLO. And uh, this is you and him. Me and him. I have it on my phone. I'll just send it to you. It's probably so much easier. Um, uh, I'm so not Ben's like a like Ben's like a good dude. Like he doesn't curse. Yeah, he's like doesn't drink, doesn't smoke, doesn't do anything. He's just a good fucking dude. Halston, I'll just send it to you. It'll be it's so much easier. So, uh, Bert's MacBook Pro. Uh, let's see. Uh, that's me. No, 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 no. Here we go. That's me. Okay. So this is. Uh, nope. Not edit. Cancel. This is. Share and share. Here's me and Bennis Grins to. Uh, No people found, Halston. Hang on. Hang on. General, airdrop, everyone, uh, photos, Halston, Halston, to Halston? Okay. I did. I did have, well, I had the benefit of, I played the day before. Mm -hmm. So I played a full round the day before, uh, and he oh, hadn't yeah. played in a little bit. Yeah. And he was like, I'm not loose. He's stretched out. Like, he's a real athlete. But my point being, not that I'm just better than Ben at disc golf, but my point being, <laughs> Ben's going to hear this and be like, and by the way, he's a man. He's competitive as shit. He's, he's jacked. I mean, like, you know, you see someone on TV and you think, oh, that guy's he's in good shape. Dude, you get next to him, his shoulder, no, like, just tank top, flip flops. Just 
huge shoulders, huge arms, and just a jaw that you go, I couldn't kill him with a telephone. Yeah. Like, yeah. He's just he's just a fucking man. Yeah. So like the fact that Jake Paul knocked him out to me being ne standing next to Ben Askren is uh is is just enough. Where I'm like that's fucking badass. I don't think I could ever knock out Ben Askren. Okay, is this, this is Ben's drive. You can zoom in a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Here we go. It's a good drive. Good drive barefoot. Look, look, he's jacked, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's fucking jacked. Yeah. He's fucking jacked. Yeah, dude. That's a pro fighter though. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. A champion. World champion. Yeah. All right. Go to the go to the more athletic sneaky guy. Yeah. Sneaky athletic guy. Sneaky athletic guy. So look at those arms. Mm -hmm. And that's what he threw. Yeah. And then Halston in a second will mm -hmm. pull up your boy. Your boy, Burke. This Christ. is hole one. This is hole one. Now, I go for a forehand. Wow, that guy's sneaky athletic. Look at those legs. Yeah. Okay. Uh, don't worry about what I'm saying. I'm not sure what I'm saying. You can scroll forward a little bit, Halston. And here we go. I turn around to the thing, make a joke. Watch mm -hmm. this throw. Wow. God damn. Guess what happens next, Tom? You know uh, it. Yeah branding now do you wait did he go this way he throws a for a backhand i throw go, forehand oh wow i didn't know people did that yeah forehand's easier for me uh i will say when you watch the fucking gangsters throw mm -hmm. like there's this guy ab who throws bombs i'm talking like 800 feet bombs fucking does he bombs. go overhand or under? overhand he his forehand wait. or backhand like this backhand yeah i go like this just because of baseball and uh, so it's easier for me to get more spin. And Does uh, it throw like I'm, a Frisbee or no? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. You should play one time. We'll play in Austin. You've never played, right? Never. It's fun. You'll you'll get into it. Uh, this kid, AB, is fucking... Uh, this isn't him. But is this like a... This is a legit guy here? This is a legit guy. So you look at these. And they fucking Whoa. throw it far as shit. And wait, what do you do from there? You pick it up right there and you throw it again? Yeah, is this Ben Askren? Similar Looks hair. Like it. A lot of hippies. And then... Oh, Anthony, where is he? Wait, he, but what is the goal? You get it into that cage thing? Yeah, you get it into the cage. So you, so Does this have to stay in the cage? Like yeah, the yeah, cage? it's got to land in land there. Land in the cage. Yeah. Okay. And uh, it's it's really fun, but more importantly for me, it's like a nice long walk. It's, it's being outside. Yeah, that part's cool. You can fucking cool. have a good time. It's really fun. Um, and then you get a little competitive with yourself, and it's cool to throw bombs. Like I, yeah. every now and then I'll throw a fucking bomb, and you're like, not How all weighted the are they? Uh, like a, up to 174, this dude, this dude, this dude. Fucking look at this, bro. Look at this, seriously, dude. He throws his first throw. Now, I'm talking like I'm with Paul Macbeth, I'm with fucking, I'm with look at this. This is him. Watch this. I love the announcers. Oh! So then, wait. From there, he'll just toss it into. He'll the toss elbow. it in. Yeah, he take out a different. But these, all these dudes are gangsters. That's AB. Like that kid is throwing fucking nukes. Wait, he'll switch switch them. He he goes forehand. Like if he's trying to throw a bomb, he'll throw a backhand. And no, then but I mean, will you switch your disc? disc yeah. So th right there, he's probably throwing like a one seventy four, really complicated disc to throw. And then this, look, he's rolling it. This is how good this guy is. He can then take it and roll it. He knows how to make it yes, do that? Yes, Wow. It's so fucking impressive. Look at that. Kid's a fucking monster. Oh, so is there all different discs? That's Simon Lazat is the number one right there. Yeah. And that, that guy is like the OG of like... No, but answer me though. What? Wait, so what's... When you have... Uh, like when you're closer, you switch the weight up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right now, when you're driving, right now he's do, he's like using a mid range driver, yeah. and it's probably 154 grams. Grams, yeah. And so look at this kid. 
Look at this fucking cat. So are they more weighted from a distance? From a distance, you want to use a heavier one. Or if you're okay. going into the wind, okay. you want to use a heavier one. Uh, if you're going with the wind, they say you want to use a lighter one so the wind can carry it more. Um, but, I mean, I, I I only do heavy from the tee, uh, heavy over stable. Mm. And, uh, but, but, and then when you get closer, you lighten your weight so you have more control. Because the yeah. less weight, the more control you have. And then when you get real close, you use your putter. And your putter looks more like a traditional Frisbee, only like smaller. Hmm. And, uh, but look at this fucking kid. Look at this, Tom. Look at how far this kid fucking yeah, throws Yeah, no, it. he's fucking ridiculous. All right. Look at this. And then do you drink and stuff while you're doing it? Uh, these guys don't. They take it super serious. They're you all like, do. I do. Yeah, I take fucking some IPAs out there, a little yeah. joint, yeah. cigar. I brought a cigar out here to watch them play. This is at DGLO. This is at DGLO the year before. Is that like, that's the Open? That's the Disc Golf's Great Lake Open. Look at this. The whole Ben and I threw, the whole Ben and I threw, that kid just threw it fucking 800 feet. Right there. How far do you guys throw it, like, to oh, compare? Fucking three, maybe? Yeah? I, I don't know. I really actually don't know. I think probably 300 feet. Um... Ben probably more. Ben is actually better than me. He's way better. But my putting was on. I was fucking draining him. You would really enjoy it. I'm telling you, it's funny shit just he to get out there. He has his caddy? Like you switch out? You have your... a caddy, yeah. Oh, my God. They bring about probably 20 discs with them, all different weights, some stable, some over understable. So what, what they want is like on that thing, he's like, well, I can get in there, but I got to go around this way. So then he'll use a, fuck, I'm always fucking this up. He'll use an overstable disc. And so it'll cut in this way. An understable disc will cut out that way. Wow. Look at this. Oh, it's over, a, over lake. a lake. USDGC. Look at it. It's coming back around. And then, by the way, the other guy, this, I, mean, I could watch this all fucking yeah. day. Look at that. You got to go through the thing to get to the T. Get to the, shut up, ace, fucking ace. Wow. Can I tell you what I was, my business approach? Mm. That is a stupid business approach. Yeah, I think we're good here. We can. So, yeah, we can, we're, I'm just going to keep looking at yeah. it. So my business approach, because I want to get involved with disc golf in, in a way to kind of help the sport. Like I, I want to take what I can, like I'm for, for the DJLO, I just went out and just hung out. And I was like, if you want to take pictures, come out, let's watch disc golf. So I didn't, I didn't get paid for it, but we just hung out. And yeah. so I played a little bit. People could, people could pay for charity to come play with me and, uh, and the pros I was playing with. And so um, what was I saying? Oh, oh, so here's my business model. Okay. So I watched a guy like this guy, or Simon Lazat's also a gangster. He, he would take inc insane approach shots. So everyone else was going through things. Mm -hmm. Simon Lazat would be like, he's like a German kid. He's like... I'm gonna go over that water tower and just be like, and make a crit and have these insane shots. That's what's fun for me in watching disc golf. Like no one wants to watch someone fucking lay up. Like yeah. no one wants to watch here and then there. Here we go. Um, in my opinion, I, I, or at least I don't. I don't give a fuck. I was gonna take whatever the pot is for the tournament, like whatever the prize money is, yeah, and pay a kid like AB or Simon Lazaco. Yo, I want to sponsor you. I need you to wear my shit, but I just want you to throw fucking nukes all day. I don't want you to try to win this tournament. Yeah. I want you to make it fun as bombs. fucking shit. Yeah. Throw fucking bombs, crazy approach shots. I want to. I want to see they can throw a, a disc. Uh, they were saying, I forget who. I think they. I think they were saying AB can throw a disc where he throws it upside down. Upside down, it goes like this, and then goes like that. I go, yeah, fucking crazy. Yeah, nut shots. That's, that's what, what I want to see. see too. That's all I want to see. Yeah, I want to. And we'll, I, next time I'm in Austin, next time in Austin, is there a we'll place go. to play there? Do you live in the? You po possibly live in the capital of disc golf. Really? Austin, Texas is the heart of disc golf. Didn't and know. Austin, number one, dude. A long time ago, there used to be a show on MTV with. Um, Fuck, never mind. Let's change subjects. Uh, shout out to Philip Lee. I went to Sushi by Scratch the other night. Jesus Christ, it's so fucking good. Was this good. the guy out of Austin? Yes. Wait, it's what is so this? good. He does this like fixed menu omakase sushi, but it's not like the re like, it's not like a piece of salmon that you get at a regular. It's it's all elevated, and it was so sushi by Scratch. Yeah, it's so uh, that's 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 it right there. Exactly. Yeah. Were you Where, in Seattle? No, no, it was here. He did a pop-up oh. here. 
Like just a temporary run. Oh, it's so fucking amazing. It's so good. And they put like the, like see the board behind them that has the, in the middle there. Yeah, yeah. That's the, what you're going to have. So it's all written out, but, but it's not the pieces that you're used to having. I'm saying it's not the tuna you would normally get. It's all, really? yeah, it's all like a different version, his version. Um, and it's just so oh, unbelievable. I cannot recommend it enough. It's in a bunch of cities now. So if, if you look at what they have, okay, I cannot recommend it enough. I think they're in Chicago, Seattle, Miami, Montecito, Austin. There's a few. I think they opened Montreal. Um, cannot Su I cannot recommend it enough. Sushi by scratch. or steakhouse. Ooh. Meaning, meaning per, for the money. So we're going to go in. We're going to it's a baller night. It's me, you, uh, your agent and my agent, right? <laughs> yeah. Like just like a night where like, yeah. you know, like, yeah. I don't know. It's a business night. Sure. I, I would say Rogan, you know, but like, fine, it's, it's, it's do it that way. <laughs> okay. Um, you, you're going to pay, let's say, let's say like uh, with drinks and everything. It's a $5,000 bill. God damn. For okay. the four of us. Yeah. 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 It's going to be, but, but now here's the deal. For five thousand dollars, do you want a steakhouse at five thousand dollars or sushi at five thousand dollars? Sushi. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Um, now here's a question. You're taking uh you're taking you're taking those people out to eat. Where would you want to go? Sushi or steakhouse? It's Cause like for for men, I feel like taking men to sushi is kind of like inviting them into bed with you. Like if you do if you take a man to dinner, you have to take them to steakhouse so they you both know. We're not, nothing's happening. <laughs> That's not at all how it goes. Like but. If, if you're like, you want to get sushi, the guy's like, okay. All right, what are we doing? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I love steak, but I also feel like the older I've gotten, like I used to just be like, how big can a steak be? And I'd just be like, oh, you have a 34 ounce steak? Yeah. You know, let me order oh, that. Yeah, ribeyes. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm into ribeyes, hardcore now. Of course. But then oh, I now I get smaller cuts. And um, I just try to get like good quality stuff. But I also feel like there's that thing where, I mean, there's some nights, look, I really want a steak, but a lot of times you're just like, this is just, it is the same bite over and over. It's delicious, but it's the same whoa, bite. Whoa, whoa, you are fucking me up. And then sushi is like Hold so on. much variety. Like so many, the, all the fish tastes different, you know? The, it's the same bite yeah, over and over. And if you have it a 20 ounce steak, you're having that bite like a hundred times. That is insane. <laughs> it's true, right? It's the same bite. It is. It's like being married. You're going to just fucking want to be with the same old bag forever, mm -hmm. right? You want a little Taylor Swift in there. <laughs> <laughs> That's what sushi is. Oh, fuck. Yeah, it's the same bite. But those fish are all different. I mean, yeah, and salmon and yellowtail there's different and flavors. Cream, scallops, they all taste different. Oh, I'm so on. I, I'm not going to fuck with sushi while I'm keto because I have to go rice. Oh, right. You don't like, like that. Well, I can do. I, I don't get full off uh, sashimi. sashimi. Yeah. Like I, I eat it, but I don't get full off of it. A steak, oh, I get yeah, full off Yeah, satiated. With, I think that also there's more fat. If you're eating a ribeye, you're yeah. having a, it's, it's more satiating that way because the fat satiates. I cooked a. Uh, Cowboy, bone-in cowboy cut, uh, about two inches thick from Snake River the other day, mm -hmm. yesterday, yesterday, before the concert. Have you had, by the way, have you had Piedmont steaks? No, nope. Googling it right now. Piedmont steaks. What is this? What is this, a, a website? I mean, the, this is not a sponsor. I, I, obviously. Yeah, this is neither a, is Snake River. Neither is the fucking uh, FanDuel or whoever the fuck we go with. Those These Piedmont ones, I went when I was there. To their place in, uh, I think, in Nebraska, wherever it was. And then they sent me some. Holy shit. Their fucking hot dogs are. Dude. Unbelievable. You spell it weird. You don't. It's Piedmont says. Piedmont. Piedmont. Right there. It's up. It's in front of you. I'm spell. I'm. Sp How? Hang on. Are you spelling it right, Halston? How did you? Oh, yeah. That's what I just said. Piedmont says. Sponsor. Uh, okay, I'm on it. How many? What did you buy, dude? You got to get the, uh, everything there is amazing. Shop get their category. Get their. You got to get some steaks. Get their ground beef, and get you have to try their hot dogs. I'm serious. 
Their hot dogs? They're, you have to try them. Dude, this makes my dick hard because this is all Here in my go. diet. See, this is what's beautiful about keto yeah. is it's all in my fucking diet. Get their... I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Get steak. Get their ground beef. Traditional beef bratwurst or straight up hot dogs? Get their, get their hot dogs. All grass-fed, all hot dogs. Yeah, get that. Done. And you have to get some steaks. $24 for 16 hot dogs? It's, That's fucking... That I'm in. It's I'm so in. good. I'm in. I just added it to my cart. And then get you got to get some get some steaks though too. I'm definitely getting steaks. Are you kidding me? Okay. All right. Hold on. Let's go. We're getting ready to wrap this up. Let's find yeah. out if people would buy a two day pass. Okay. What they okay. say? Fucking ninety five percent is yes. Seriously? Yeah. You want to do that? Let's do it. Let's so you, do it. You do let's the do, hits one do, night. What, let's do. Um, God damn it. Let's do it. Oh, let's fu- let's let's do it. Let's. Do- what? You you. I know you know what I'm thinking. No. Yeah. You know, uh, Tom. It's a fucking ninety five ninety five percent. Let's do it. All right, let's talk about it. Let's do it. Night after night. <laughs> Come on, let's do it. Let's do hey, it. You have to you have to bill it though. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Fuck yes. Fuck yes. The hits, the new stuff. Did you do new stuff first night or second night? Second night. Hold on. Think about Metallica. So having seen oh. what I saw, I'm super excited about for Sunday. So wait, so do you recommend new new stuff first night? New stuff first night. Hits, hits second night. Second night. Hits Ooh. second night. Okay. How do you work out your hits set? Uh fucking we post it. We post it on socials. All our fucking bits. People just fucking vote for their favorite bits and then all and we just go, that's it. That's our set list. Be pretty fun to do the hits. It would be so fun to do the hits. To do the hits, and then and then I'll come up and tell one of my favorite jokes of yours, and then you can tell the machine. I'll be like, when I was 22, I got involved <laughs> with the Armenian mafia. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm getting this steak. Okay. I'm getting fucking... <sighs> what did we learn today? This is what... This is a recap of the show. We should start doing that. Oh, t- today on Two Bears, One Cave... We found out Tom and I will be betting whatever a sponsor gives us to do reads for a betting website. On every Monday Night Football game. every Monday Night Football game. We'll be betting the yeah. entire capacity. We learned that Tom wants to blow loads in Taylor Swift, along with many other women. And they're not getting pregnant. And we also Ever. learned that $24 for 16 hot dogs is a deal if you know how to make hot dogs. I'm telling you, you're going to call me and be like, oh my fucking God, I cannot believe this is a hot dog. It's that good. I, I've... Is your mouth watering? Yep. And we need to end because I have to go eat now. Okay. I have to eat. I'm, I'm literally like fucking panicked. Okay. All right. Um, great episode. Great episode. I love you. Love you too. Bert and Tom. Tom and Bert. One goes topless while the other wears a shirt. Tom tells stories and Bert's the machine. There's not a chance in hell that they'll keep it clean. Here's what we call Two Bears, One Cave.